Hey everybody, I just wanted to welcome you in and I want to show you something that I think a lot of you are probably going to enjoy. Uh, so I've been making these for a little while. Uh, they're called mystery pixels and basically what a mystery pixel is, it's using Google Sheets and uh, you could potentially use Google Slides as well. Uh, and what we can do is we can put in some questions uh, inside of Google Sheets when the kids put in the correct answers to the questions that we're creating for them. Uh, mystery pixels or small little pieces of this of this uh, basically a puzzle are popping up on the screen for the students revealing a picture so it's sort of like a uh, like a mystery picture right that we've used probably in class before but you're using it uh, digitally uh, with uh, Google Sheets and Google Slides okay so I want to show you how you can create those I have a bunch created already but you can you can change them around use the same picture use the coding that I have already uh, uh, put inside of Google Sheets and you can pop in your own questions inside of there based on the content that you're that you're teaching okay so uh, let's jump over to my screen and I'll show you uh, I'll show you how to create that Okay, so let me just jump right in here. So uh, I'll show you first, I'll show you a, uh, a mystery pixel that I already have completed. Uh, so this one is a taco cat. In the taco cat, uh, I want to show you a couple of different pieces of this. So first of all, I give the kids uh, their questions, right? So I can open this up. It's in Google Slides. Uh, so all of my questions are here. So I give directions. And then after that, I go into uh, each one of the questions you can see here. Uh, some of them are multiple choice, some of them are, are short answer, and uh, I have, in this one, I have a total of 13, uh, 13 different questions. So now let me show you how those line up. So if I go over here, this is the mix, Mystery Pixel Sheet. So the Mystery Pixel Sheet, notice that it looks like a, just, just a big blank canvas, and then over here on the left-hand side, I have the question numbers. Uh, actually, I have 12 questions in this one, and then also the answers as well. So the way that this works is, that I will put in the uh, the answer, and if the student puts in the correct answer, then uh, mystery pixels appear, right? So uh, for the first question, uh, the answer was A, and notice that some of the picture appears. So I'm gonna go through this and show you each piece of this. It doesn't have to be numbers, it can be, uh, it can be anything. Notice this one is a full word, um, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Uh, so you can make mystery uh, pixels, those actual pixels, appear um, with either words, letters, or numbers. Uh, let's keep going through this. You can see this one, like I said, is a mystery cat, so or it's a, a taco cat. Uh, so you can see that this is complete. So there is, uh, there is the taco cat, okay? So if I erase these all of those pixels go away, all right? So hopefully uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now let me lead you through how I would actually do that. So I'm starting a brand new mystery pixel and the mystery pixel that I'm starting right now is a, uh, is a bunny. So this is the bunny. I have this picture already. So like each one of these boxes was uh, a color was put in each side, inside of each one of those and it created the picture. You can do this uh, yourself, or you can, you know, you can have somebody, maybe an artist or somebody, they could they could work this out, and you could have them, you could have them make it for you. Um, the other thing that you can do is like once I create this, um, you can you can adjust my questions and answers to make this appear however you want. So if I make this a math activity, but you don't want this to be a math activity, you want this to be, you know, a, maybe a short answer response or. Uh, you know, maybe a reading passage or a vocabulary activity, or you can make the questions whatever you want, and you could change the coding inside of mine uh, to make this picture up here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, so to do this, we're going to use conditional formatting. So let me let me show you what this looks like. So right now, uh, for question number one, I don't have anything in there. Okay, and usually this is the route that I go. I start with I start with the picture and I start formatting, and then I do the questions later. You could definitely do the opposite. You could have the questions uh, made ahead of time. I just like to get all of the coding for this, all the conditional formatting. I like to get that done ahead of time. So um, inside of box one, um, or question number one, so this is actually, you can see here, because the question and answer are up at the top, so I'm gonna go to question number two here. So one, um, uh, box number two, um, B2, I'm gonna click inside of that, 
I'm going to format that. I'm going to go to conditional formatting and it opens up the side panel. Once the side panel is open, there's a few different options. And, uh, and here's what I'm going to do. So right now, I am going to say um, that the format rules, I always start there, format cells if, and then towards the bottom it says custom formula is. So here in the value for the formula, and this always works the same way, I'm going to do equals dollar sign. Now that's box B2, so I'm going to put equals dollar sign B, dollar sign two equals, and for right now, I'm just going to put one in there, okay? I always put a one in, and that one is basically just my placeholder until I get all of my questions finished. So whatever your answer actually is for question number one, that's where you would put it, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. But for right now, I'm just going to put in a one just because I want to start getting this, this formatting inside of here, okay? So you're actually going to go back later and you're going to change that one to whatever the real answer is, which we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So now I am going to go down here and notice that it says the color that I want this to be. So actually, I think what I'll do for this one is I'll make this the sun. So we'll say the yellow. So I'm going to say that I want this to be yellow and I'm going to apply the range. So the range is the things that are yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the data range. Notice that a new box pops up. I hold down the control, uh, the control key, and I just start clicking uh, all of the all of the yellow boxes. And you can highlight multiple at a time, and it puts it inside of there. So I'm going ahead and I'm clicking all of the yellow. Now this is good. I'm going to go ahead and say OK because it's all saved inside of there. And then notice that right down here it does say done. You do need to make sure that you click done. Okay. Notice that all of those all of those cells are still highlighted. Now, because I've already done question number one and that's all the yellow, I'm actually going to change the formatting for this. I'm going to change the uh, the the uh, the fill color. I'm going to reset that so it all goes away. So I know that that's finished. Okay, so I'm done with that. Now, watch this. I want you to see this. This right here in this box for answer number one. If I typed in one, yellow will appear. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If I backspace that out, I get rid of that, it's gone. If I do one, there we are, okay? All right, so now let's go to box number two. So I'm going to add a rule for this under conditional formatting, and I'm going to go ahead and I am going to say for this one, we'll do custom formula is, and uh, for this one, I think I'll do some of the, the blue sky. Sometimes it's hard to find the exact color, but the custom down here, it picks the colors that are in the photo for you. So if they're not up here, the custom colors show down here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna choose that blue. Now I need to do a total of 13 different questions. So I'm not going to do, I'm not gonna do all of the blue. I'm only gonna do like half of the blue for this one, okay? So for, for question number two, if the kids get it right, they would come back here, they would type in the correct answer and it would only uh, fill in what I have it set up in the conditional formatting to do. So uh, again, so I'm going to do equals dollar sign B because that is column B. I'm going to do dollar sign and that is, uh, let's see, that is three. So I'm going to do um, equals and I'm going to do one. All right, so we're good there. And I'm going to select the cells that I want this data range to uh, fill. So I'm going to, I'm holding, uh, I'm holding my control key and I'm going to fill all of those up. So you can, sometimes this is easier to do than other times, but um, especially if you have a really intricate picture. Whoops, I think I just selected that one. Yeah, I did, there we go, perfect. Okay, and we'll leave the clouds, perfect. This one, there we go. And I can do that one, boom, boom, and we'll do uh, we'll do a couple more here as well. So I'm going to go all the way over to uh, column S, the way it looks. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I think everything is perfect here. So I'm going to click Done. And I am going to reset the color of those so I can see what I have done. And yep, perfect. So now uh, if I do number one, question one, I have the answer of one. Question two, I put the answer of one as well. Now, like I said before, you are going to go back in eventually and you're gonna change these to the answers that you want the kids to come up with. So 
if you're giving them, um, you know, if you're giving them some sort of math problems, obviously the answer isn't going to be one for each one of those. So you're coming back inside of here, you're clicking in that conditional formatting, and you are changing it from a one to whatever you want it to say. Okay. Don't be too detailed with those. You definitely don't want that to be too detailed. So if it's a, uh, you know, if it's a word problem and you want the kids to put the number and the uh, the label, I wouldn't really do that if I were you. I would just stick with the number. Um, but if you wanted them to put in, you know, a, a word, you could have them do that as well. So, um, you know, like, uh, let's say that we want to do Rams. So I would do a quotation mark and then type in the word Rams and then end quotation mark. So I would say done here. So now if I click in, if I type in Rams, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So now you can see that both of those come up. For numbers, you do not need to put in, uh, for numbers, you, you don't need to put in the quotation marks, but for words, you do, okay? So make sure you keep that in, uh, keep that in mind. All right, so that is, uh, that is pretty much it. So I'm going to go through the rest of this, and I'm going to format all of those conditional rules. And, uh, and then uh, once we're finished with that, you will be ready to start creating your questions. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Okay, so at this point, now that we're totally finished with all the coding piece of this, uh, all you would really need to do is just, I, I usually double check it, right? So um, at this point, I have all the answers set up as ones. So I'm just going to go through and make sure that all of my pixels do in fact appear if I type in one. Now, like I mentioned earlier, obviously your answers are not going to be one. I just put those in as, as a placeholder. Uh, so this is my original, this is where I have all my questions. And you can do something similar to this. It doesn't really matter how you give kids the questions, whether you want to give it to them inside of Google Slides or if you want to give it to them uh, in another way. Um, so you can give them all the questions. So you can see here for, uh, for the first question that I have for this one, it's a fraction question uh, and it's a, a multiple choice and the kids would have to choose A, B, C, or D. So then once they have the correct answer, they would go back over here and they would put in the right answer. But before I do that, before I actually assign this to kids, I need to go back in and I need to change the actual answers. So let me just go back over here for a second. So three fifths, uh, so it's A. So I would go back in here. I would click in here. I would do open my conditional formatting and click on here. And because it is a letter, I would do the letter A just like this and then go ahead and save. Okay, so now if we typed in A, if we typed in A here, that would pop up. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So um, like I said earlier, you can definitely use this however you want to. You can use the questions that I already have created, or the alternative is uh, you could create your, your own questions based on the content that you're, that you're creating for your students. Uh, and, and what you could do is you could go in and change all of the answers inside of the Google Sheets, okay? You do get your own copy of this, so it won't impact my original file. Um, you would get a, uh, a complete copy of your own, and then you could, you could go ahead and type in those answers, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, I, I will show you a couple of things here. So I have a bunch of these already created. So I have, uh, I have the bunny, I have the taco cat. Uh, we have a rubber duck for, uh, a rubber duck for uh, National Rubber Ducky Day. And I have a few others as well. So if you, uh, if you want to use the actual um, a pixel sheet, you can definitely do that. Um, but like I said, just don't resell those or, you know, uh, put those online other than obviously sharing with your students. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. And if, uh, if you have questions, let me know. Thanks so much.